ಪ್ರಿಯತಿರಾಜಸ್ಯ ಸಾಮ್ರಾಜ್ಯಂ ಸರ್ವತೋ ಮುಖಂ ಯತ್ರ ಸಂಪತ್ಕುಮಾರೋಪಿ ವರಾಜಪದಾಸ್ಪದ ಅಯ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನವರ್ಧ ಸಭಾಯ ಉಪಸ್ಥಿತ ಅಧ್ಯಕ್ಷವರ್ಯ ಮಣಿದ್ರಾವಿಡ ಮಹಾಭಾಗ ಅನೇ ಚ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ವಿದ್ವಾಂಸ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಭಾಷಾ ವಕ್ತು ಇಚ್ಛಾ ಯದ್ಯಪಿ ಅಸ್ತಿ ತಥಾಪಿ ಅನೇಕೆ ವೈಜ್ಞಾನಿಕ ವಿಷಯ ಲೇಚ್ಛಾಷೆ ಪ್ರಸ್ತೂಯಂತೆ ಅಥ ಅಥವಾ ಅಥ ಅತ್ರ ಉಪಸ್ಥಿತ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಪುರತ ಲೇಚ್ಛಾಷಾ ವ್ಯವಹಾರ ಮೈ ಕ್ರಿಯತೆ ಅಯಂ ಅಪರಾಧ ಸೋಢವ್ಯ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥೆ ಪ್ರಥಮ ಸೊ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಟು ಬಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಅಕೇಶನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಎನ್ ಇಮೋಷನಲ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಎ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವಿ ರಾಘವನ್ ಹು ವಾಸ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಅರ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಬಿಕಮ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಶಿಷ್ಯ ಆಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕುಪ್ಪಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಆರ್ ಸೊ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ವಾಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ರಾಘವನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕುಪ್ಪಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಆಸ್ ವಾಸ್ ಮೈ ಪ್ರಾಚಾರ್ಯ so when you are celebrating the 70th anniversary of this particular institution i am extremely happy to be here and present a few ideas about jagat from the point of view of sankhya yoga systems of philosophy many times i tell people when you present something with regard to these ancient shastras you must make it relevant to the modern world if you don't make it relevant probably people will not take it only people who are really having interest and who are having that equipment will enjoy those lectures and at the same time they will also be not very much worried about this as soon as the seminar 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 is over unless you make it relevant to the modern world so many times i tell people my roots are in the past my roots are in the past i am in the present i want to work for the future so did i disturb it so my roots are in the past that's most important it is just like a tree if the, the roots are not seen when you cut the root what happens the tree automatically dries up in the same manner my knowledge will dry up if i forget the roots the roots are very important i should not actually swerve from the roots but at the same time i must be in the present and also work for the future so from that point of view i'll present some some views about sankhya system of philosophy particularly the information about the jagat is given in sankhya system of philosophy yoga does not very much bother about it it is a practical application of the theoretical foundations of sankhya system of philosophy so from that point of view there is not much difference between the yoga system and the sankhya system as far as jagat is concerned now let us try to understand something about sankhya system sankhya system is considered to be an orthodox system of philosophy generally people call it call them shat darshanas and shat astika darshanas also they will say but there will be a sort of confusion here that's what i want to mention here most of the times we feel when it is astika darshana it must accept the presence of god or it must accept the existence of god unfortunately sankhya system does not accept the existence of god at all so it is a nastika system from many point of views view point of many people on the other hand so definitions are given what is a nastika system and what is a nastika system veda pramanya abhyupakantarah are called astikas since sankhya system accepts veda pramanya it is also considered to be a nastika system but at the same time since it does not accept the existence of god it could be an astika system nasti tivadinah nastika paramatma nasti tivadinah nastika in that way it is an astika system also very interesting thing is i think our indian scientists are not very much interested in these systems of philosophies when you think of the science of the west 
most of these sciences evolved from different uh, philosophies of the western uh, western philosophers you can think of uh, uh, plato or aristotle or even uh, descartes etc etc but unfortunately we people in india our own scientists in india have not bothered about looking into various shastrik studies particularly shad darshanas in fact they should have drawn inspiration from these great shastras and they should have developed indian science and technology in my opinion we indian scientists are brilliant we can do wonderful things and you are always looking at the west for inspiration particularly with regard to science and technology when you are a follower you can never become a leader if you want to become a leader have your own original ideas and do something so from that point of view i request many scientists who are assembled here to draw some inspiration from indian shastras shastra and science should be a wonderful study here afterwards if if we can bring in shastras and science together probably we can go ahead very interesting thing with regard to india is we can fall back uh, fall back upon certain ancient knowledge systems if you want to do some uh, wonderfully uh, innovation uh, innovative theory uh, develop innovative theory or discovery whereas the westerners have to depend upon their own intellectual abilities nothing more than that you have got wonderful sciences wonderful shastras i think our ancient people have developed the uh, developed these knowledge systems for the last 5000 years from that point of view the western science is just 500 years old or 300 years old many people do not know that pingala's chanda shastra consists of so much information regarding binary codes and how to convert 8 bit codes into a decimal system even that is available but unfortunately leibniz steals the whole show he developed the binary code system that's what people will say so from that point of view though it is not very much relevant to this i request the scientists who are assembled here and also great sanskrit scholars who are assembled here try to bring together sanskrit and science or shastras and science so that we can progress further and we can we can become leaders and we need not be followers so from that point of view i'll mention one more interesting thing which i am having in my mind can i develop indigenous sustainable eco friendly technology not ego friendly technology i am trying to do that to some extent so from that point of view what happens sankhya system seems to be a very interesting system probably modern scientists who are well versed in thermodynamics quantum mechanics etc they are looking forward for giving some explanation for creation they are very much worried about cosmology when you, when they are thinking about cosmology always we think about this the theoretical uh, theoretical physics according to me there is no much difference between the theoretical uh, physics and also philosophers both of them are speculators only if i am right i think uh, one theoretical physicist is present here so they speculate it is logical speculation based on that they have derived certain theories in the same manner our great sages like kapila and so many others have derived so many things and it is almost theoretical physics according to me according to me so from that point of view sankhya system becomes a very important system in addition to that i think uh, the most authoritative text on sankhya is ishvara krishna sankhya karika which dates back to the 4th century or 5th century ad we are sure about that because in the 6th century ad sankhya karika was translated into chinese that is very clear we know about that very clearly since it was translated into 6th century probably it was prior to that so let us place it in the 4th century ad or 5th century ad by that time it should have been very popular namaskar i was very anxious to see you sir <laughs> please come so thank you sir so we must explore so much with regard to sankhya system one more point i want to caution you 
many times people will say using modern science science we must try to validate our ancient knowledge systems i am not for that because those sages and saints were far superior to these modern scientists on the other hand i want to tell you please explore the scientific possibilities going into the ancient knowledge systems you are not expected to validate it because it is beyond validation that's what i want to say and one more thing is our science has not developed so much the scientific devices you have developed so far is at a very lowest uh, lower stage according to me you cannot validate those great uh, ideas or ancient knowledge systems which were developed by our ancient scientists it is far superior to all your devices so unless your science develops to that level don't think of validating what people what those people have stated and the realm of science is in the field of inferential knowledge and also perceptual knowledge whatever these people have stated depends upon shabda pramana which is beyond inferential knowledge and also perception so from that point of view also you are not expect to validate what these people have stated on the other hand you try to understand those things through the language of science and if you want to put it in the language of uh, science please try to do that that's what i want to tell you we must be very cautious about this this what i want to say so validation i don't accept because uh, the ancient knowledge systems developed by these people are far far superior compared to all these knowledge systems what these scientists have developed so far now from that point of view we have to study sankhya system philosophy and when they are explaining jagat what they are trying to do when you study the philosophy of descartes he said he introduced the dualism and his logic is called cogito ergo sum that is i think therefore i am he said go on doubting about the existence of everything in this world and you can doubt everything and say they do not exist but you cannot doubt the existence of the doubter himself because you are doubting so you are existing so in that way he stated that there is a subject and there is also an object so he introduced the dualism into the field of science so they call it mind and matter or some such probably the word mind is not a very interesting thing for me or it is not a proper word for me because mind means so many things in western science it may be consciousness or it may be an instrument which gets consciousness and so many other things so many confusions are there fortunately in india we have got very clear ideas with regard to mind and also consciousness etc etc and so many people have worked for the sake of consciousness for the last several thousand years shankaracharya has contributed so much ramanuja has contributed so much madhvacharya has contributed so much probably utilizing these philosophies nobody has developed any experiments or uh, created any experimental methods to understand what is this consciousness there is a great lacuna in that field also so from that point of view we have to do wonderful things my feeling is i am uh, pleading with uh, dr kameshwari and also dr nataraj uh, bal subramanian i think you people should come together already all of us are becoming aged uh, when i was, uh, spoke to just now uh, dr bal subramanian i said they are all aging we must think of new people who can take up these works so from that point of view wonderful works are expected to be done by different organizations i require more than 1000 or 2000 organizations to explore so many possibilities in so many fields and so many domains of knowledge unfortunately it is not happening probably we sanskritists do not have that much of coordination vaishnavo vaishnavam drushtva dandavat pranamayad bhuvi is a statement pandita panditam drushtva swanavat gur gurayate is also a statement sorry so how can we come together that's what i'm asking so then when we think of the jagat sankhya system says there are only two principles when you say jagat you think of so many jivas and jiva is the combination of purusha and prakriti 
I will not highlight much about Purusha because some other person is expected to give enormous amount of information and scholarly information with regard to Purusha or Jeeva. Now I will say something about the Prakriti. And when you want to say something about Prakriti, you have to depend upon Ishwara Krishna Sankhya Karika. Only three shlokas I will try to highlight here. Prakriti, uh, prakriti er mahan tato hankaras tasmat ganascha shodashaka. Prakriti er mahan. Prakriti is the primordial matter. That's what Sankhya system says. Probably physicists have to shed much light on this concept of Prakriti itself. Prakriti is called unmanifest. It doesn't have any form. It is infinitesimal. It is so subtle, etc. And it is also called Jada. Does it compare to a black hole? I don't know. So many explanations are given. Probably physicists, particularly the theoretical physicists, should try to explore more about uh, the concept of Prakriti in Sankhya system. This much has been stated. Prakriti, uh, prakriti is primordial matter. It is Mula Prakriti. And it creates so many evolutes. It is an evolvent always. It has no cause of its own. It is there forever. And it is subtle. And it has no intelligence, etc., etc. So, Prakriti is the primordial matter. Unmanifest matter. During the time of Srishti, what happens? There will be some sort of unequilibrium or the equilibrium of the Trigunas, namely Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, which is the constituents of Prakriti, not attributes. Very important. According to Vishishta Advaita system, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas are the attributes of Prakriti. Whereas in Sankhya system, we say it is the constituent of the Prakriti. They are the constituents of Prakriti, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. What is the Sattva and Rajas Tamas? We don't know. Though I have studied Sankhya philosophy several times, many a times I feel I have not understood it completely. In fact, in this context I have to mention, there is one uh, Dr. K. Srinivasan, who was a marine engineer, who studied the Sankhya Karika nearly for 26 years. It seems he had got, he got some uh, out of body experience, etc., etc. And he says, nobody has understood Sankhya philosophy so far. I have studied all the 72 sutras, he calls them. And they provide so much of information with regard to quantum mechanics. And I can answer all the problems or the, all the questions asked by the modern scientists with regard to quantum mechanics using the Kapila Sutras and Kapila Sankhya philosophy. For your information, he has written a book which runs into 580 pages on Sankhya Karika. But when I read the translation which he has done, I cannot accept the translation. Because the translation is not perfect, it is not based on any words. From my point of view, it is a sort of inspiration which has, which has come to him after studying the Sankhya philosophy. But enormous amount of information has been given. He says, by using the mathematical axioms, you can answer all the problems of nuclear science using Sankhya Karika. That's what he has stated. That much I can mention. If somebody is interested, you can open the internet and you can see that. It's very easy. And I think there seems to be something. It is not blah blah according to me because he has written 580 pages and he has also says, he, he also says, I have cracked the Rahasya of the Sankhya Karika. That's what he says. So Prakriti is like this. Then Prakriti evolves into a Mahatattva. So, Mahatattva itself is significant because Prakriti was not Mahat, it was Sukshma. A, a thing where an object which had no dimension has given to an object which has got dimension now. So, that's why it's called Mahatattva. It is manifest matter or it is also called Buddhi or it is called universal intelligence. Some people translate it as universal intelligence. I'll come to that. Whether Prakriti has intelligence or not, that's another inter inter interesting question. I'll come to that later. So, Prakriti he mahan, tataha ahankaraha. Then this Mahatattva produces sort of ahankara. 
ahankara is a sort of personalization i get some knowledge then i say this knowledge is mine i am having this particular knowledge that's how people translate it so it is ahankara prakriti produces three types of ahankara namely sattvika ahankara rajasa ahankara and tamasa ahankara when the equilibrium of the prakriti is disturbed then it gives rise to mahatatva and mahatatva gives rise to sattvika ahankara rajasa ahankara and tamasa ahankara generally rajasa ahankara does not play a very important role in the action and it plays a very important role in any action that means it is just like a catalyst if it is associated with sattva guna then what happens it produces certain things if rajo guna is associated with tamo guna it produces certain things in that way what happens ekan ekadasha indriyas are produced by the association of rajo guna and tamo guna that is ekadasha indriya sir number 1 mind that is manas many a times i think this english translations are misleading in fact we should use the original words themselves because it has got a different implication altogether when you call it mind many people may mistake it for our brain so it is called manas it gives birth to manas tattva and then manas tattva then along with that it will also produce five sense organs what are the five sense organs chakshu shrotra ghrana rasana tvak these are the five sense organs this will be produced and it will also produce the pancha karmendriyas or motor organs motor organs are vak pani pada payu and upasthan so all together 11 indriyas are produced this mind is considered to be a bahya indriya as well as antarindriya also it can function inwardly also it can function outwardly also so these 11 indriyas or 11 senses are produced sub five are called karma indriyas and five are called gnana indriyas generally they translate karma indriyas as motor organs and gnana indriyas as sense organs so 16 uh, 15 indriya uh, 11 indriyas are produced like this then this prakriti uh, sorry this uh, rajoguna along with tamoguna produce something it produces the five tanmatras or subtle elements i think physicists have got a great uh, interest in these five tanmatras it is shabda tanmatra sparsha tanmatra roopa tanmatra rasa tanmatra and gandha tanmatra all these are associated with five pancha mahabhutas five great elements i think uh, the study of sankhya philosophy is very much important particularly in the modern context because we have polluted all the pancha mahabhutas in the world <laughs> how to keep them pure have we not uh, vitiated the prithvi have we not uh, uh, sullied uh, water what about uh, fire we are using so many other uh, other uh, fuels because of that only we are having so much of pollution so many cars and so many other vehicles and then vayu we have definitely polluted akasha space also we have polluted so how to keep this pancha mahabhutas pancha mahabhuta theory is a very important thing and it is very important from the point of view of ayurveda also i'll come to that so it will produce pancha tanmatras and these subtle elements in turn will produce pancha mahabhutas ಲೈಕ್ ಪೃಥ್ವಿಯ ಪೃಥ್ವಿಯ ತೇಜೋ ವಾಯು ಆಕಾಶ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ದನ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಹೌ ದಿ ಜಗತ್ ಈಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದನ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ನಿಮಿತ್ತ ಕಾರಣ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಜಗತ್ ಅಕಾರ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಸಂಖ್ಯಾ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಿಲಾಸಫಿ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೈ ಸನ್ ಇನ್ ಸಮ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ದ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟೆಡ್ this purusha is the nimitta karana for the jagat but in the sankhya system purusha doesn't play any important role as an uh, as in an active way purusha stu pushkara palashavan nirlepaha he is just like the water which is on the lotus leaf he is not interested in anything he is not active he will not do anything sakshi cheta kevalo nirguna that's also another statement he is just a sakshi mere witness 
that means he will not participate in any activity can we call a mere witness as the nimitta karana of this jagat or do the sankhya philosophers or uh, 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 sankhya philosophers do not accept the nimitta karana itself that's can we that uh, can we say that of course there is so much of information in sankhya karika with regard to satkarya vada i don't know there is much information about the nimitta karana of the world what they say is when prakriti purusha and come together they come together closer to each other because of the induction there seems to be some activity in prithvi uh, in uh, prakriti the uh, the equilibrium is disturbed and it begins to create so only the proximity helps that's what so can we call the proximity itself nimitta karana here this one of the important questions to be answered by great scholars who are present here i don't know much about that i am not a great scholar in sankhya i have studied something in fact i taught sankhya karika for some time in bangalore university so these are the 25 elements that are created five tanmatras pancha mahabhutas five plus five 10 24 rather then ekadasha indriyas 11 plus 10 21 then prakriti mahat and ahankara 24 this can be represented by the varga aksharas many people do not know that ka kha ga gha nga cha cha ja jha ya ta tha dha na ta tha da dha na pa pha ba bha these are the 24 principles represented by prakriti in uh, one of the rahasya granthas of shri vaishnavism they say makaram irupattanjam aksharamai gnanavachiyama irukayale atma vai chulluhiradu yes makaram irupattanjam aksharamai that means 25 25th gnanavachiyama irukayale mana gnane from that root it has developed yes so gnanavachiyama irukayale atma vai chulluhiradu so according to sankhya the jiva are jagat the jagat the people who are in the jagat consist of two things prakriti and purusha or panchavimshati tatma tattvatmaka purusha that's what you can say 25 elements are there in him purusha plus 24 so when you think of jagat which is a mixture of purusha and prakriti we have to say 25 when you go to ayurveda they say uh, 26 they add paramatma also as antaryami so 26 principles are there in each body this how it is now one more classification is done in sankhya karika mula prakriti hi avikriti hi महदाद्या प्रकृति विकृत सप्त षोडशकस्तु विकार न प्रकृति न विकृति पुरुष सम ऑफ दम आर् विकृति एंड सम ऑफ दम आर् प्रकृति सम ऑफ दम आर् प्रकृति एंड विकृति वेन यू से मूल प्रकृति आर् प्राइमरियल मैटर इट इस मूल प्रकृति अविकृति इट इस नाट विकृति इट इस प्रकृति ओनली दट मीन इट इस नाट जनरेटेड बै एनिथिंग मूल प्रकृति अविकृति महदाद्या प्रकृति विकृत सप्त महदाद्या महत्व अहंकार एंड देन वाट आर् दंचतन्मात्र आर् प्रकृति विकृत बिकाज महत्व जनरेट अहंकार अहंकार जनरेट पंचतन्मात्र सो पंचतन्मात्र फाइव प्लस वन प्लस वन सेवन महदाद्या प्रकृति विकृत सप्त षोडशकस्तु विकार लेवन karma karma indriyas gnana indriyas and manas are the indriyas 11 indriyas are gen- not generating anything else so they are not causing anything else they are the final products so it is vikruti only similarly pancha mahabhutas are considered to be vikruti only then you may ask the question how so many things are produced using pancha mahabhutas that means they are just modifications of the same they are not something new it is just like uh, मृदात्मकः घटः एक्सेट्रा इन दट वे सो दिस इज अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग गिवन नाउ आई वांट टू मेंशन वन मोर थिंग एंड कंक्लूड माय लेक्चर आई विल नॉट टेक मच ऑफ योर टाइम बिकॉज सो मेनी अदर पीपल आर वेटिंग नाउ द त्रिगुण थियरी इन द संख्या सिस्टम इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थियरी अकॉर्डिंग टू दे से द प्रकृति कंसिस्ट्स ऑफ थ्री गुणास नेमली सत्व रजस एंड तमस they are the constituents of prakriti and every human being is the product of prakriti 
So what happens? He will also have the trigunas. That's why you can classify some people as, as Sattvikas, some people as Rajasas and some people as Tamasas. And in the Ayurveda, I think they have used this. It's a practical application of the Triguna theory in the Ayurveda. Ayurveda is medical science. In those days also, they wanted to use this information which is available in the Shastras and make them application oriented and use it in different sciences. In medical science, it has been used. In fact, I am working in an organization called uh, FRLST or Indian Institute of Transdisciplinary Medicine, which is a university. There they have developed a small software program. We want to predict the constitution of an each individual. In that software, sorry. Okay, it's gone. <coughs> we have prepared a questionnaire. If you ask the questionnaire, it will say you are Vata Prakriti or you are Pitta Prakriti, you are Vata Pitta Prakriti, etc. etc. Vata, Pitta and Kapha are closely associated with Rajoguna, Tamoguna, Sattvaguna, Rajoguna and Tamoguna. So from that point of view, we can also say you are a Sattvika Prakriti, Rasa Prakriti and Tamasa Prakriti. In fact, I am seriously thinking of developing a software to predict the future of a company using this information. Now, can you predict the behavior of the individuals? How an individual behaves? Generally, what we say when you say Sattvika Prakriti, indirectly you have said he behaves in a particular way. There is a pattern in his behavior. Similarly, Rasa Prakriti, etc. According to this software, we have found out there, there could be more than 100 constitutions. Vata Pitta Prakriti, Pitta Vata Prakriti, etc. So many other combina uh, combinations like that. So we are also sure they behave in a particular manner in different situations. Everybody has to accept it because Sankhya system is such an important system. Every philosopher has accepted it, even uh, theists like Ramanja, Shankara, Madhva, everybody. So, from that point of view, what we can do is, can we predict the behavior of the human resources in a company? So, I study his uh, constitution according to Ayurveda, which is based on Sattva, Rajas and Tamas, or Prakriti, uh, Triguna Prakriti. And then I will say, this person is like this, this person is like this, etc, etc. And I will also collect information from the company regarding their behavioral pattern for the last five years or six years, let us say. So, does it fall into a pattern? If it falls into a particular pattern, then what can I do is, in future how he will behave, that can also be predicted. For that, I want to use the computers, simulate the entire information and ultimately say, your company will prosper or it will not prosper because of the behavior of this, of the, yes, human resources you have. With the present human, human resources uh, you have, you will be successful or you will not be successful. Sorry, I will switch it off. Hmm? <laughs> yes. So in that way, even that is a very important thing for me. I switch it off. It is giving me alarm. You completed, that's what it's telling. So I think uh, I have completed my time. So in that way, Sankhya system of philosophy is very interesting. Without the existence of God, they are able to manage the Srishti. Because I was asking my son again, because he is also a Sanskrit scholar and a good scholar, he has studied Vedanta perfectly and a great teacher. First one question comes to my mind. They say the equilibrium of the Prakriti has to be disturbed. Triguna equilibrium. Then it becomes Vaishamya of the Triguna. Samasthiti is gone and when, it, when there is Vaishamya it begins to create. Who induces this inequilibrium? Who is the person? Purusha cannot do that because he is inactive. In the case of Vedanta what happens is a Tadaikshata Bahusyam Prajaya 
it will let me become many so it became many but here that uh, desire is not there on the part of the ishara because they have not accepted ishara so how to do it is one of the important questions to self introduced is uh, self induced i do agree but it is not an explanation simply use some words that's all it is it's swabhava if you say like that then what happens you have no other explanation simply you mention one word and be done with it that's all yes it is swabhava it's its nature we can't help it that's what you say so when it should start creating and when it should go uh, start dissolving we don't it's also swabhava that means you have no explanation that's what i'm telling so i think i have given you a glimpse of the sankhya system of philosophy because i am not a great scholar in sankhya philosophy and i think it's a very important system particularly from the point of view of nuclear science and also what is tanmatra nobody has studied it is simply they will translate it as in, infinite similar very subtle very subtle element etc etc how subtle it is is it closer to uh, quantum mechanics or have they gone still further these things have to be understood many a times what happens when we when we are teaching the shastra simply we mention it is stated in the shastras like this unless you experiment and try to understand them further probably will not progress uh, once again my plea is don't make it merely an academic interest because uh, this seminar is arranged and so many people are there and they have got so much emotional attachment towards these things they are listening to all these things okay fine but at the same time can you make it relevant to the modern world can we say that it is most relevant today particularly my feeling is panchamahabhuta theory is a wonderful theory if you want to do uh, if you want to give any answers of this global warming you have to study more about the panchamahabhutas so from that point of view also the study of sankhya system is very important and from the point of view of mathematics i am uh, requesting dr bal subramanian please uh, try to understand those mathematical axioms which dr shrinivasan has mentioned and try to illuminate me with regard to those things so these are the wonderful things that can be mentioned about sankhya system of philosophy if i have made any mistakes because of my ignorance kindly excuse me thank you very much now i request our uh, trustee c t v ramanathan to come and uh, honor professor